Well, it's a beautiful day in Canada, but it's cold. Now I've got some good news and some bad news. Well, here's some of the bad news. I'm still waiting to put the diesel in this van, but the guy who gave it to me has a problem. He got it from somebody else, never changed it into his name, and the vehicle registration, he doesn't have it. We're trying to get a hold of the guy he got it from, and we just are having a big problem get a holding of getting a hold of this guy so maybe I'll have to get another van I mean nobody's claiming this van isn't mine we just can't get a hold of the registration for it next the worst news the farmers have taken the crops off my farm the beans are gone but right behind the combine is going the planter they're planting they're planting winter wheat right now well winter wheat you plant it in the fall it grows about an inch tall and then winter comes it stops and it grows well in the spring that's bad news for joyriding all our great plans of field races and trying out our new cars and power sliding and drifting that turbo Volvo are gone for this year <laughs> Wah. now there is some good news about the winter wheat it's harvested in the middle of July so that means from the middle of July to the snow flies in December, we can go joyriding every day all we want on a nice smooth field. Cool, that will be amazing. Well, nothing for this year. No hope, that sucks. Great kitty. And more bad news. Wolf has still not been seen now and it's been almost two weeks. Things are a little different at the farm next door. There's lots of people over there harvesting the corn and stuff like that, but not the same cars parked in the driveway. So I'm wondering if the owner who's my age disappeared or moved someplace else or moved in with a girlfriend and took his dog with him or but anyways, either Wolf's dead or he's unha or he's unhappy someplace else with no cars to chase. Who knows? I'll give you an update someday if I figure out what's happening. So, a lot of people are curious now about my red Mercedes since I'm getting it going for the first time in seven years. Well, this was that car in August of 2001 with my son in the driver's seat. Well, it's not a kit and it's not a real one. It's a handmade car. It's actually a copy of a kit. This is one of the early construction pictures in my backyard. I painted every piece, one piece at a time, polished it, and then bolted them together. And that's me when I was 23, when I finished this car. Still in my backyard, my little garage in the background. Back garage. The way it worked out is, I met a person who was hard up for money, who actually bought a kit of one of these cars from California or Florida or wherever they came from. He made molds of the fenders and some of the parts of that kit and he tried to start his own business to make and sell these cars in Canada. Well anyways he ran out of talent and ran out of money and gave up on the project and asked me if I would like to buy what he had started and he knew I could do something like that even though I was only 22 and had never made a car before. So, working in that garage, summer and winter, I made that. Cool. Now I couldn't buy any parts for a car like this since there's only three left in the world. Hitler had one, royalty had them. You know, very few people back in the 1930s as we were going through the Great Depression. And, of course, the few that did exist got blown up during the war, except for, like, two or three of them. So, since I had some photographs of what that car looked like completed, I just made parts, being the machinist type of person I am and good with working with metal and bodies and stuff, just made the parts from scratch. Never even tried to look for anything or buy anything. There was no eBay back then or Internet. So there wasn't a chance. It was actually quicker just to make anything than it was to try to find such a rare part. 
Well, it all worked out, cost a lot of money. A couple years later, had her done. Then I had my family, met my wife, right after actually I built it. Got too involved with all that stuff, and then I got my farm. So most of the time I never even drove it. Well, then I parked it in my building, you know, in the fall of 2001, put it at the back of that room, thinking, oh, no problem, I'll get it out next spring. It's a good place to store it. Luckily, it wasn't there previous two years before when my farm burnt down. It was in another place. But then someone gave me 400 free factory defect air conditioners in November. I had no place to put them. I didn't want to leave them outside. They were, you know, they were new. So I blocked them all in that room and sealed up my Mercedes ever since. We've had a lot of cold summers since then, so I haven't been able to sell them. Well, anyway, so there it sat. So that's the story. And this isn't my truck. I just got to fix the brakes on it. And everybody should have a beer and give me a cheer. I just hit 10,000 subscribers today. Awesome.